okay uh, friends welcome back to the second session uh, any questions or any comments you have for the first session uh, wherein we uh, talked on the project control techniques uh, any questions any comments anything you want me to interact on okay fine if there are no questions then i move to the second part uh, that is the uh, project uh, control right um, uh, sorry project evaluation now before i do that let me recapitulate right uh, in for next one uh, or two minutes that uh, what is the relationship between the uh, project uh, uh, planning and project control now why why uh, planning and control must go together although they are different functions no doubt but they are so interrelated uh, for the simple reason that uh, uh, unless there is a plan you cannot have a control and unless there is a control you cannot plan because this is a this is a cycle right so uh, you need to have um, both those both those things uh, in tandem right uh, there cannot be any base for controlling unless there is a plan and there ca there cannot be any planning unless you have a proper control technique so so that is how uh, we we say that they go both hand in hand and that is why uh, organizers were kind enough to uh, give my session in the very beginning itself uh, uh, now coming to uh, in the in the first half uh, we talked of the three types of control Feed forward control is that when you before even you initiate you fix up certain targets you fix up certain goals and you try to control uh, those things right in the sense that uh, you decide what is to be done and uh, before the process starts you uh, take those things into account while while you uh, undertake the project and then there is a concurrent control when both those activities are undertaken simultaneously right both those things are uh working in tandem uh, you are operating and at the same time you are also evaluating okay. and then there is the uh, feedback control after the event has elapsed after the event is over you you try to uh, compare them right okay uh, so if you uh, look at this uh, little complex uh, chart uh, but then uh, i will try to decipher you you for you uh, there are basically five components in this as i mentioned five w's there are five components first and foremost is that you validate what you want to test for example this session right after this session maybe you will be asked to evaluate the 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 session right and in that evaluation there there may be certain yardsticks yardsticks could be that uh, whether the expert interacted with you could he answer your questions was his speed okay was the component was the content okay all that stuff now what is this you have developed certain yardsticks are these yardsticks reliable are these yard yardsticks valid these are two different things so in any test reliability and validity is very important are these valid are this reliable now what is the difference reliability is of the tool method does it measure what it should measure for example i ask you to run running is a tool of endurance kya bhag sakte hain aap endure kar sakte hain so that means running is a reliable methodology of endurance testing of an iq is iq a reliable method of determining your uh, knowledge may not be why because you may be expert in something you may not be expert in everything you understand so all projects you must have a reliable method of measuring it second validity validity means 
in the contemporary scenario is it okay tool is uh, running is a good method of measuring the endurance uh, endurance but suppose all of a sudden there is rain all of a sudden there is a fog is this tool valid at this moment or not so appropriateness of a typical technique at this moment is very important so it may be valid yesterday it may not be valid today am i clear any questions please so you determine the validity of the monitoring and you determine the control of that validity okay second is you integrate integrate with what you integrate with your past you integrate with your future koi bhi project sir is not in isolation of your overall projects kisi bhi ek kisi bhi ek project ka implication sirf usi ke upar nahi auron ke upar bhi hoga so all your projects are in sequence are in are in group not individual third thing is with regard to the control right what is the schedule when will you do it will you do it in the morning in the evening after 10 days after 15 days so third component of how is in terms of time cost and time sorry time and cost overruns in terms of time in terms of money spent to ensure its implementation will you do it yourself no you will like to do it with some other stakeholder sir main aapko ek project de raha hu karne ke liye and you say okay i will execute it should i leave it to your wisdom or should i as a stakeholder as an investor also take care of it and then comes the question of the risk elements what are the risks involved in this project risk could be because of the uncertainty associated with with the project or risk could be because of the inbuilt nature of the project we say it is a very complex word the 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 the, the uh, american when when, when uh, uh, americans face lot of problems in vietnam because of the guerrillas there they coined a term vuca they said it's a very volatile see have you noticed that uh, americans have never ever been able to Uh, lay their hands on any other nation right they tried in vietnam they failed <laughs> they tried in afghanistan they failed <laughs> wherever they have try to involve themselves they have faced some problems resistance that that's a human nature nobody wants to be dictated by somebody so they coined it on vuca they said it's very volatile then they said it's very uncertain it's very complex and it's very ambiguous now friends just put this word vuka to your daily life to any project you can think of does these things not work for you also am i right does they not work for you also yes why do they work because we also live in a very volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous environment and all our tools and techniques are designed to somehow reduce this uncertainty All our efforts are. 
let's let's take a real life example right take take the case of uh, any 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 anything uh, if if you look at the uh, emerging trends right there is integration of technologies seemingly different technologies seemingly different technologies those technologies having no relationship at all with each other coming together and creating a new business options an example you can think of take take a simple why go far a simple handset just look at a simple handset a simple handset like this right with this simple handset lot of industries have gone out of business when was the last time you wrote a letter i i think now you have even stopped writing an email why because it's just whatsapp am i right when was the last time you took a photograph unless unless you have to apply for some government job or even photograph you don't dwell am i right you don't dwell upon photograph so companies like kodak companies like kodak which had 87% world market share are no longer existing are no longer there why because nobody is developing a photograph and their competence of kodak was printing paper jab aap photograph hi print nahi kara pa rahe kar rahe so where is the need to develop a photograph yeah. where will be need for a paper no you don't need you understand where is the need for a photocopier you hardly use any photocopier why because you scan it and send it to your google drive and cloud and what not where is that pen drive you don't need it where is those floppies old diskettes pagers through this simple handset everything has become redundant that is what i mean by integration of technologies all of you agree on this or not and none of them is within the control of any organization none of them is within the control. organization may try does not succeed why because there is no control over why go far let's 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 associate with each other on how many 25 20 30 whatever number we are no i'm not i'm not here to uh, say that projects of x or y or z will be important or whatever there's a general change in the philosophy of, of look at look at your what is our each one of us our our habits a typical mindset is spend and god will send that applies to all of us are we all not living a borrowed life borrowed life how all of us have a pre uh, a post paid connection meaning first i will use the mobile and then i will pay hmm. we borrow we we buy handsets in installments we buy a flat or an house in installments 
we buy a car in installments but please remember somewhere down the line somebody has to pay for it there is no free lunch so that means why this is see see lifestyles have changed that have an impl impact on projects lifestyles have changed You want an example? Think for a moment. Ancestral houses. What was the nameplate? Nameplate was Vermas, Sharmas, Agarwals, Pandes. Around 1990s, 2000s, we moved to Sajeev Sharma, ground floor, Rajiv Sharma, first floor, Rakesh Sharma, second floor. Same Varmas we divided into floors. Look at the present generation. I'm not saying right or wrong, please. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to uh, discuss the social stratification or, or the family stratification. Look yourself, Anshika or Madhavi, whatever. You ask your younger brother or sister or son or daughter, he will say, Mera Kamra. It's my room. So, from, from ours to mine, how we moved, and, and your, at least, at least, your generation is the transitional generation, which has seen both sides. And my generation has also been a transition. We have actually seen from Varmas into floors. And maybe many of you have seen from floors into rooms. Can these have anything to do with the projects? Yes. Please remember any project is a manifestation of real life situation. You cannot have a scenario where you do something which is distinct from what is happening around you. No, not possible. The real life is a true manifestation of actuality. Maybe on a miniature level. So in the same, in the same format, in the same project, same types of influences will be there. So I, I'll skip because if my presentation is fairly long. Uh, I will try to uh, restrict myself to only the bare minimum requirements, uh, but I will share the PPT with, with my organizers, <coughs> with my organizers. Those who care to take it, you can take it from them. When we evaluate, karte hai, toh, we face two problems. One is the go error and second is the drop error. Go error and a drop error. Mm. Now, what is the difference between these two? We say this is a go error. We say this is a drop error. What is the difference? For example, no, no, in, in any, any, any real life situation, any real life situation, there are two extremes. The person may be willing or unwilling to answer. Person may be willing or unwilling.
I ask you how is my session, you may be willing to answer. But if I ask you some private question, you say, sorry, sir, I, I will not answer it. So there may be willingness and there may be unwillingness towards a particular response, a question. Similarly, you may be able or you may be unable to answer my question. <clears throat> So, aapka 2 by 2 matrix ban gaya? Hmm? Am I clear? You have a 2 by 2 matrix. I ask you, what did you take in your breakfast today? Immediately you will respond. You are able to answer it. But if I ask you, what did you take in your breakfast on 3rd of January? You will scratch. Oh. If I ask you what is what did you take on first January, you, you may still remember because that was the new year, right? You, you could remember. But if I a mini school thing 6th of January, you may not remember. Or if I ask you what was your score in class 6, you may not remember. So, so although you are willing, you are unable. Or you may be un you may be able, but you are unwilling. Am I clear? Anybody, anybody who's not clear on this? Yes, please. Anybody, because it's a very important concept in evaluation. We must know what can go wrong in my evaluation. So, friends, person may be willing or unwilling, depending on his. Personal choice mm. or it may be recency of event which may make him able or unable. Am I clear? Now, suppose person is unwilling or person is unable. I survey him. I go with him. I ask him. He is not willing or he is not able. But I survey him. But I seek his opinion. Ma'am Shweta or Ma'am Chaya, will they give me a right answer? No. Why? But they will still give me answer. Sir, ne pucha to chalo. They may give me a vague answer. They may give me an incorrect answer. So, so such types of errors. Where the person is unwilling or unable, but is included in the sample, including in evaluation, will lead to go error. Error ho gaya na ji? Kyun error ho gaya? Kyunki usne kala jawab dena hai mujhe. Take another case. Take another case. The person is, sorry. The person is able and is also willing. He knows the answer and is ready to share the, his views. But I don't include him. I exclude him. I drop him. He is able. He is willing. But I have not included him. I have not surveyed him. I have not asked him. Biasness will be 
So in both these cases, I have, I do not have an unbiased estimator. Any questions to anyone? Because this is the gist of evaluation. Gist of evaluation. Any questions to anyone? Any questions, any doubts you have? Hmm? Yes? Yes, please. Any questions? Any doubts? Okay. So, for my evaluation to be effective and efficient, I must be involving those who are able and willing to respond to my queries. Otherwise, project evaluation cannot take place. Okay, with this brief uh, introduction on this concept, let us see. Okay, before I come to this, why why should we evaluate? Certainly, it helps you to improve on your quality. It helps you to find out value for money. It helps you to learn why uh, uh, so that your future teams also get trained. Now, there are three options available to evaluate. One is internal evaluation. Ab apne team banaye, they will evaluate. What is its USP? Its strong point? Biggest strong point is that you know what are your strengths and weaknesses. Because typically the evaluator would have risen from the ranks. He will would be a part of your team and he's risen. So he knows what are the challenges or issues in your organization. So he's able to answer them properly. He's able to find out what, what is wrong and what is right. And then there is an external other, other extreme, the external evaluation. Those undertaken by an outside agency, like you have Pricewaterhouse, you have uh, McKinsey, you have like that, they will evaluate you. What is its USP? They are independent. They will not be influenced. But in case you are not able to do it, then you try to find out a mix of the two. You help the program, the outside agency, by giving them certain points. Ki ye points hai jahan pe aap evaluation karna chahiye. So you try to have a combination of evaluation done by external, but facilitation done by internal. Ki, sir, ye mere aspects hai. I request you to kindly evaluate <coughs> Sorry, on these very aspects. So I'll, I'll because my time is short, so I'll skip okay now what do we expect from what do we expect from such evaluation it will help you to find out how much there has been a deviation in the performance deviation in performance Friends, deviation can be because of three reasons. Your performance is better than anticipated. I predicted that I will be able to sell 100 units. I am able to sell 120 units.
this could be because of two reasons <laughs> one could be underestimation of my performance my capability underestimation of So that means my goals were lower than, but they should have been. Am I right? Goals were lower than, but we should have. Other reason could be all of a sudden there has been a surge in. The demand. Have you noticed that? Uh, you, you'll be very surprised if you uh, have not read it. Almost 53 percent of the total refrigerators and air conditioners are sold in the month of January to March. Now this is. Can anybody explain this? Why? Two or three months, you sell almost 60% of your total product. Why? These are not summer months. The reason is very simple. Social customs, traditions, marriage season. How can marriage be complete without the gift of a refrigerator or an air conditioner? So you have December until February, huge sales of social customs, traditions, they override the almost, almost 70,000 crores worth of gold was sold only in the tri-city on Thantiras. Then you realize that <laughs> we are not a poor city. You understand? So maybe maybe your goals were lower, or maybe there is certain external influence which help you to improve your performance. So they they, they are not your true manifestation of your performance. Second deviation could be. Lower than anticipated. What was the first scenario? Your performance is better than anticipated. There may also be a case where your performance is lower than what was anticipated. Again, the same logic applies. Maybe it is overestimation of my capacity. Overestimation. It's an overestimation of my capacity. You lower down your standards. I feel that no, 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 no. I I overshot my target. I thought more than what I could possibly do it. Or it could again be the same reason. It could be because of factors beyond the control of the evaluator or be sorry uh, um, beyond the control of the initiator and the promoter. Somebody who is doing the project, it is beyond his control to do this. You want me to sell so many units, all of a sudden there has been a curfew or a in my city, I can't sell it. So I need to rework back into my goals. Why? Because my performance has not been up to them. Is it clear? Any questions? And third, my goals and performance have no deviation. <laughs> then what will I do? I will like to recycle. I will like to continue with my performance. Why? Because whatever I predicted, I performed.
Am I clear, please, friends? Any questions you have on what are the types, the problems in evaluation? Okay. Now, to summarize on what I said, evaluation of performance could be of the individual management or the process itself. So what will you evaluate? You will evaluate the team, you will evaluate the management and you will evaluate the process. Now, so there is a, there is known as a picket, P-I-C-O-T, picket evaluation. What is this picket? Picket evaluation of a project. The name of the, uh, it is after the name of the scientist who, who gave this concept of picket. Two components we have already done, the effectiveness and efficiency. Effectiveness in terms of achievement of goals, efficiency in terms of resources used. There is a third component that is the relevance with with the overall organization relevance with overall organization goals you are attending this course hmm? you can measure its effectiveness and efficiency but at the same time i'll also be very keen I'll also be very keen to know its relevance to you. How relevant it is to you. Will it add any value to your growth? Will it add any value to your future? Will it add any value to your career goals? If yes, you will have to tie up with the effectiveness and efficiency. That yes, this has given me the relevant content which will help me in my career goals, career aspirations. And then there is the impactful analysis. Impact in terms of improving your overall personality. Impact in terms of improving your work culture. Impact in terms of improving your efficiency in your daily work. And last component is the societal well-being. We started with this session on this. Societal well-being. The social cost benefit analysis. We build up a dam, we build up a water reservoir. You, you, if you have unfortunate incidents, what is what is currently happening in the holy Yoshimat? Unintended consequence of a good decision. You wanted to broaden the road so that the passage is easier. But it has led to the sinking of the whole Joshimat side. Now, that is to me the social cost involved in this project. It has economic implications also now. Fine. It has led to reduction of the local flora and fauna. It has led to the animals being moved away, it led to, right? Dismantling of many of the places, a lot of people had to be relocated. So every project has to have certain social cost benefit analysis also. No project, howsoever small or howsoever big will have zero social impact. 
all projects will have some social impact. Am I clear or not? Any questions, my friends? Anything you want to add? Okay, so now typically, typically, whenever you evaluate any project, you get this form, such type of a form filled up from various stakeholders. Now, what are the what are the various stakeholders in any project? Typically, friends, there are five stakeholders in any project. Any project, five stakeholders. Suppliers. All suppliers have, have your success in mind. Because if you succeed, they will also succeed. So suppliers have tremendous interest in your product. Same way your buyers. Those who are users of your project. They also have tremendous interest in your performance. Why? Because if you do your job properly, they will be gaining. The government. They also have a positive influence on you and want you to succeed. Because if you succeed, they gain. Because of your effectiveness and efficiency, the national resources are properly utilized. And because of your efficiency, your profitability, they gain because they earn taxes, revenues. So contrary to public perception, the governments want projects to succeed. If nothing else for political bond points. So your suppliers, your buyers, government. Fourth, the general public. There is certain intangible benefit of being associated with a project. We feel so happy when Punjab University gets a good rank. We feel so happy when NITTR gets a good rank. We feel so happy when PEC, Punjab Engineering College, gets a good rank. I am not a product of uh, PEC. I have never been maybe to that place. Many of you may not have been to that. But you feel happy. Oh, my city. Swachita Sarvekshan, Chandigarh got the seventh position among the United, no, the, the, the compact cities. Yeah, we feel happy. Hmm? Why? Because of the association with it. We may or may not be direct beneficiaries. Certain intangible benefit associated with it. And another player, fifth player, fifth stakeholder, who will be very keenly observing your growth is your competitors. They have interest in your success. Positive or negative, that, that's there. If they are short-sighted, they will have interest in your failure. If they are long-sighted, if they think futuristic, they will always have your good in mind. Why? Because if you succeed, the reputation of whole industry goes up.
reputation of whole industry goes up. I'm I'm reminded of an example of a I don't have that uh, as a PPT, so I will just share it with you. Toyota, one of the classics in in management. See, Toyota has a very unique method. It has a very transparent production system. Anybody is allowed to come, even their competitors, they are allowed to come to their factory and look at the plant. Look at their plant. Now you will say, a miser like me, hey, why should I share my secrets? They say, no, let my competitor come. Look at my plant. Two things will happen. They will borrow my idea and go back and implement it. Great. So what happens? Whole of the automobile industry improves. Achha idea, no? Whole of the automobile industry will improve. So I will be forced to improve still further. So as to be leader. And then there is a second concept which says, okay, when a, when a competitor comes, criticizes my project, I get an idea to improve. So in both those scenarios, in both those scenarios, I am the long-term gainer. Wonderful philosophy, no? Wonderful philosophy. There is another, uh, uh, those of you who are having some interest in public reading, you must, must have read about Jack Welch. He was the CEO of General Electric, world's largest, one of the largest consulting companies, GE. Myself. So somebody asked him, what is the secret of your success? One of the most admired managers, the project managers ever in on, on this planet. He said, somebody asked him, define your job. He says, I'm a gardener. <laughs> Don't laugh. In fact, he said, I'm a gardener. And then he elaborated it. He said, what is the role of a gardener? Gardener helps you to nourish the plants. Waters it, gives nutrients, fertilizers, so that plants bloom, grow. He said, I'm also a gardener. I'm training my employees so that they can take the decisions themselves. They can execute the project on their own. Then he said, there is another function of the gardener. What is that function? That function is, it also removes the weeds. So those people who are non-performing, they have to be gradually removed from the system. See, wonderful, wonderful statement he has given. That is why he is considered to be the one of the greatest managers ever. So friends, this is how good projects are executed. See, please remember, mind is like a parachute. It will work only when it is open. If it does not work, that means something is wrong. Yes, my friends, any questions, any comments? Sorry, I have done most of the talking. Any questions? I did not give time to you. Any questions you have? Yes, please. Anyone? I think uh, this group needs to uh, contribute also. Uh, whatever, otherwise uh, it becomes very difficult for the... Uh, anyway, your choice. Okay, fine. So I was into uh, how we 
evaluate the performance right and an important component of evaluation is the evaluation of my quality components so quickly uh, these are the seven stages before i move to the quality norms these are the seven stages uh, first and foremost please identify what is you want to evaluate you will you identify evaluation process oh sorry purpose what do you want to evaluate and whom will you evaluate what do you want to evaluate and whom will you evaluate and second comes what is the technique you will use to evaluate so you need to develop certain designs could be through interviews could be structured questionnaire could be formats anything then you need to find out how will you measure it will you do the sampling will you do the exhaustive population will you do it through interviews will you do it through telecalling whatever you also have to find out the various timelines very important timelines are very very important friends why because timelines determine whether certain corrective actions can be taken or not and last one what will i do with it what will i do with it will i be able to take some action or will i only do it post next year or project so friends this is with regard to a typical typical tangible project what about intangible projects those which are qualitative sorry I, i'll come to this okay. on in any project for example how will you evaluate the performance of a bank how will you evaluate the performance of a service or, or insurance company you normally do it through five modes and this is given by uh, by the name of surf service quality index it is also known as service surf perf surf perf what is surf perf evaluating the performance in terms of the services rendered now what are the, what are the parameters what are the parameters first and foremost is you measure the performance in terms of tangible components the surroundings the equipments the physical presence they all determine the tangible component of any project you can actually see them although when you go to the bank you can actually see them the performance of of those people right how are they behaving Right? so that's one right? so first and foremost component is with regard to tangibility second is with with regard to their reliability as i mentioned reliability of any process how quick they are just just a minute just a minute so we need to be we need to be reliable not only to our stakeholders but to ourselves also okay so that's my second component okay. third is with regard to how quick i am in terms of my response what is my response time there is a complaint how quickly i respond back do i do it immediately or do i do it within manageable what is please remember manageable time limits is remember nobody expects you to do the performance immediately or each one of us have certain gray area certain area where where we feel we give benefit of doubt to the supplier right so so we need to find out what is our response time now another thing associated with every project is the guarantee part is remember two things are there in guarantees and warranties warranty for repairs and maintenance warranty is the timeline for example if 
I say that this pen is good and I give you a guarantee of two years. If something goes wrong in two years, I will replace it. Warranty is for its repair and maintenance. If something goes wrong, I will repair it. I will not replace it. Am I clear? Okay. And last one is empathy. Empathy means how do I respond back? How do I empathize? Do I put yourself in that situation? For example, for example, humne decide kiya ki ye kaam karna hai. If it is, if I were the buyer, if I were the user, how will I respond back? So empathy basically means putting yourself in the shoes of the customer. So friends, with this these five components you are able to evaluate the quality of a service of any project so again to recapitulate you may have a tangible method of measuring any project you may have an intangible method of measuring any project you need to find out a right balance between these two the project may be tangibly okay, but intangibly quality wise not good. The project may be quality wise good, but still not be able to give you financial returns. So you need to have a combination of both friends. Now, this is a study done by the US construction agency, right? It identified why projects fail? Just look at it. Most of the things are internal to the organization. Most of the things are internal to the organization. That means within the organization such problems occur. For example, management changes its priority. When I start the project, X is my priority. By the time I mid course correction is there, priority of the management changes. There is, there is a change in the management, organization restructuring. A classical example is Infosys. As long as the old guard, Shibulal and uh, uh, Narayana Murthy and Gopinath and all those people were there, they were doing fine. As soon as there was change in the management, restructuring, Infosys took a slight dip. Again, it recovered, but not to that extent. Now, why? Because there has been some change in the priorities of the management. That occurs, in fact, occurs everywhere. It's not, it's not something unique to XYZ organization. It's a human tendency. Another problem could be in terms of inaccurate estimations. We are not thorough with our homework before we initiate the project. We don't find out the right kind of people. We don't use the right kind of resources in terms of money, in terms of material, right? So there is an inadequate representation of my requirements. Many a times objectives may change. Objectives may change. In terms of profitability, in terms of social cost, in terms of, right? So, or there may even be the support of the other stakeholders may go down. There may be political uncertainty, there may be certain components which for which, like for example, I have developed a project. All of a sudden, there has been this Russia Ukraine war. Whole of the Europe is literally freezing. Why? Because availability of energy is an issue there. Do you understand? Now, there is an uncertainty beyond the control of an individual organization. Individual has no role. But it's happening. 
So what will happen to your project? There are bound to be cost overruns. There are bound to be issues there. And finally, is over dependence on on outside resources over dependence on outside resources things which are not in your control will determine your fate To answer such things, Japanese have given. See, I started with the Japanese concept of 5S. Now I'm moving to the second Japanese concept of Kaizen. They have given a wonderful concept, which is known as the 360 degree evaluation. 360 degree. What is the meaning of three? That means taking care of all the stakeholders, whether small or big. All the stakeholders. So you need to take a team feedback right from the top management till the daily report. You need to take feedback of your customers, direct or indirect. You need to take back of your suppliers, the government. So meaning thereby all those five stakeholders at all levels must be involved in your evaluation. I've already explained to you the concept of uh, re-engineering, so I will not, right? Now, allow me, since, since uh, I'm running out of time, uh, quickly I would like to show two more PPTs. This is the core theory of project success, right? And if you look at them, it boils down to quality of relationships. Relationship with your vendors, with your buyers, relationship within the organization, because a sound relationship will lead to collective thinking, will lead to quality, improved quality of actions and will lead to results. And for this, an American company by the name of McKinsey has given 7S. What are these 7S? The organization structure to implement any project. You must have a sound structure. All your structures must be backed by adequate systems, reporting relationships, recordings, true manifestation of your performance. Must be matched by the adequate style of your top management. right kind of people for the right job and then there are skill sets continuous improvement training and development of your staff management development of your management all of them must be shared with common value systems because unless there is a value system we all share each one of us will go history. So shared value systems is the binding force which links strategy, structure, systems, everyone together. And this was the concept given by McKinsey. So it's known as McKinsey 7S. And last is the concept of human response. How do we respond to control? Do all of us like control? No, none of us like control. All of us like to have a decentralized structure. But please remember, with power comes responsibility. You cannot have a power and no responsibility. So power and or authority goes with responsibility. So unless there is authority, you cannot expect responsibility. Unless there is responsibility, you cannot have power. 
so authority power and responsibility they all go in tandem they all go into tandem 